What's up everybody, Alex here with another cup of coffee video. So, this is it. This is what got me started on YouTube in the first place. It's my 1953 Bowman color set, which was built over a three to four year period, during which time, as you guys may recall, I wasn't collecting anything else. This was my one and only focus. It was such an incredible experience, one that I shared with many of you, and it's one that went far beyond just picking up cardboard. For example, getting the common cards of this set, that turned out to be one of my favorite parts of building it because I felt like I got to know 1950s baseball in a way that made that time period much more meaningful to me than it ever had meant before. Without realizing it, I used to have a pretty limited appreciation of baseball in the 50s. It was limited to the big names like Mantle and Mays, and let's say the major bullet points of what happened during that time frame. But just like any era in baseball, there's so much more to explore. And I find that common cards are a great way to get into those eras. And that's exactly what happened for me with this set. Beyond that, there's another benefit to common cards and that's what I'd like to share with you guys today. So this is my latest pickup. It's a 1953 Topps Irv Norin. Now, unless you're building this set or collecting Yankees cards, this is a card that probably doesn't go under anyone's spotlight. And that's for good reason. It's a common card. But it's under my spotlight. And that's because for me, this is a common card that's worth collecting. It's worth collecting for three reasons. It's look its history, and how those things factor into one of my growing PCs. As many of you know, I've got a side PC going of 1950s baseball in New York City, where I'm selecting cards of players from the Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Giants that catch my eye and help tell the story of that time. So this fits perfectly into that narrative. The key thing that caught me about this card is its overall look. I went through the entire 1953 top set, and I have to say this card is the one that best displays a Yankee player with Yankee Stadium being prominently featured in the background. In my opinion, the 53 tops artwork can be a hit or miss, but this is definitely a standout, and I think it's one of the most pleasing images in that set. It's a bit of both New York City and baseball history to get Yankee Stadium artistically represented on a card from this set. Now, as for Irv himself, he originally came over in 52 to help out in the outfield since Joe DiMaggio was retiring and Mickey Mantle was slow in recovering from his very famous knee injury. Noren was a reliable platoon outfielder for Casey Stengel during the regular season, working with Mantle, Hank Bauer, and Gene Woodling. Stengel said he felt comfortable playing him in any of the three outfield positions, something that Noren worked at during spring training. He did end up playing in three World Series, all against the Brooklyn Dodgers. He started in center field for the injured Mantle in the 1955 series, which didn't fare too well, and ultimately the Dodgers would win their only World Series in Brooklyn that year. His best season was in 1954, when he batted 319. His peak came mid-season, when he led the batting race with an average of 366, but Norn was hampered the rest of the way by a wrist injury after his All-Star Game appearance that year. 54, of course, was the season when the Yankees ended up playing second fiddle to the Cleveland Indians, who faced off with the New York Giants, who won their last World Series in New York that year. So you can see how this all ties together. Now, I'm not trying to suggest that it's all on Irv that the Yankees lost in 54 and in 55. There's obviously much more to it than that. But in general, it's just interesting to see what was happening on these team squads from year to year, what the factors were, what contributed to the end results. One common card, one player that would be easy to overlook, rubs elbows with all the points of the game that matter, and allows me, the collector, to see those points from a different perspective. It helps flesh them out a little bit more, and it adds to the overall enjoyment of the hobby and the baseball history. That's the beauty of a not-so-common common card. When you look at it on its own, there's a certain level of appreciation that you can get from a common card. 
but when you place it alongside other cards that help tell the story, it can really amplify your appreciation of that very same card. I talk a little bit more about this with my friend Terry from TJ Maxx Vintage Cards and Nostalgia. In a collaboration video we did a while back, I'll post a link to that video in the description below if you're interested. Anyway, thanks so much for checking out the video guys, hope you enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll talk to you all soon.